Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. I'm about. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Welcome to another installment of the R2F show. Um, we have myself, um, Mubarak, myself, Jaffer, Jane Griffin, and Mubarak Johnson. And we will be joined soon by Amr, inshallah. It's probably uh, still uh, waking up or catching up. But um, we're not going to waste too much time with uh, pleasantries because we're going to jump right into and we're going to be covering this for weeks because um, we we didn't realize what kind of a uh, gold mine we had here with all these contradictions and shirk and issue, Islamic issues in this infamous black book that is one of the it's like the first book that Mubarak Jelani wrote that a lot of people uh, followed in TMA a lot of the founding fathers and founding mothers but a lot of Islamic concepts, or not Islamic concepts, uh, deviant Islamic concepts that um, are still held by many members and ex-members till today. Um, just real quick, uh, at the bottom of the screen, you will see ways to contact us. You can email us at email r2f at gmail.com. We also just opened up a WhatsApp group that um, there's a link there at the bottom where you can just come in the group and you can contact myself or bark or armor um, if you have any questions if you want to debate us you want to refute us you want to correct us show topics whatever just click the link and go ahead and chat in there everything's confidential um so that's that uh what else do we have assalamu alaikum and so <clears throat> let me see if i could share the book because we covered last week we covered a portion we covered the editor's notes we covered the contradictions that came up in the editor's notes. Uh, this week, we are going to cover the introduction of the book. Let me see if I could just go ahead and um, share that. I want this, share. Okay, and let me see the best screen option we can use for this. That doesn't look good. Let's just stick with that one right there. And if I could zoom in a little bit. Okay, I think that'll work. All right, if there's if anybody has any problems reading it, um just just let us know. Let me pull up my notes real quick. Just so we can get started. And again, if you have any observations, any questions, shoot them in the chat. Tonight we are live on YouTube. We are live on Facebook, and we are live on Twitter. Um, so mm -hmm. if you have a chat, just go ahead and throw it in the chat. Any observations, any questions, put them in the chat. We're going to try We're gonna try to be very deliberate in covering this. We don't want to miss any detail. There's a lot of issues in this book, and we want to give each one its due right to the point where at the end of all of this, we hope, we hope at the end of all of this that – people will see i don't even know what word to use to describe this will see how ridiculous this stuff is and how anti-islamic these beliefs and these statements made in this book are okay. so this is the first like i guess chapter of the actual book okay and we're going to go into the introduction so let me scroll down so, uh, Sheikh, Sheikh uh, yeah, Jaffa, uh, yeah. before we get started, I really want to uh, just mention this uh, hadith first, um, just because. Oh, yes, I forgot. Mm -hmm. to, uh, no, it's okay. Uh, just so that we can have a kind of a, uh, a anchor, so that we can anchor to something, right, as we're going through it. And we'll try to bring a hadith. Um, you know, we thought about going, just going through the book, but I feel like we, we have to bring a hadith, at least one. To anchor to because this book goes in so many different directions and so we'll mention this idea so that we can so we can remind ourselves of um how rasulullah Islam speaks uh what the religion of islam is based on and how we and how different from islam and the sources of islam that this book is so yes. this is in this book uh 
um, it's not just in this book, but um, the 40 Hadith of Imam al um, you can get the PDF, you can get the hard copy, whatever, but this is one of the um, Hadith, Hadith number five. And so, um, let's say, uh, that, um, أنا أم المؤمنين أم عبد الله عائشة رضي الله عنها قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فهو رد um, and so on the authority of the mother of the faithful أم عبد الله عائشة رضي الله عنها who said the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever introduces whoever introduces anything into this matter of ours that is not from it shall have it rejected and this is in sahih bukhari and muslim as well as other authentic uh, compilations of a hadith so uh first things first this hadith as we mentioned is in sahih bukhari you can check it it's in sahih muslim and of course it's in this book uh the 40 hadith of iman uh, imam uh arbari nawi by imam an nawi so um so what rasulullah sallam is saying is that anything anything that is introduced into the religion try to try to enter into the religion that's not part of it it will be rejected it will be rejected by allah and this is what the hadith uh, uh states that so whatever actions we might do uh acts of worship things that we want allah to reward us for if it has not been legislated by allah and practiced and approved of by the messenger Allah will reject it. So as we're going through this book, um, this, uh, what's the name of this book? Futiha Muhammadi, or uh, I just call it the Black yep. Shirk book, but. Um, Black Shirk book, yep. Yeah. But as we go through, keep this in mind. These are the authentic words of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anything, anything that is tried to, in, that anyone tries to put into the religion of Islam, Allah will reject it. It will be rejected, which means number one, you will not get any reward for it, and you can be punished for it. But for sure, your your, your efforts will be wasted. Uh, but if it's something that uh, you are doing intentionally, see, this is the thing. If it's unintentional, you're not going to get rewarded for it. If it's intentional, you'll get punished for it. So you have to be very very careful. So uh, let quick, me just. I uh, got a question. Yeah, I got go a real, quick question for you. So when you say. When the, when the hadith says the, in this matter of ours or in Islam, mm -hmm. how do we term determine what is actually part of Islam as Muslims? Uh, well, you can only derive Islam from two sources. Really, it's just one source, actually. It comes from Allah. That's the only place you can get Islam from. How do you get it from Allah? Allah doesn't just, just uh, sprinkle a little here and there to different people. Allah, Allah sends the pure Islam through one person at a time, and that's a messenger. So whether it's Nuh them or before that, and down the line of the messengers, there's only one person in on the earth that can get uh, the. And sometimes there has been some occasions where there's been more than one messenger that has been, you know. Uh, on the earth so i don't want to say only one person right. at a time but it has to be a messenger that's the only conduit that's the only avenue in which we can derive our islam so it comes from allah only allah only sends his islam the religion that the religion of allah through the messenger that's it it doesn't get like extra stuff doesn't get sent to saints or we don't have dreams and then think okay this is part of islam None of that. The only way you can definitively say this is part of Islam, you read it, or you saw it in the book of Allah, which has been preserved, or the messenger who Allah sent during your time. You can't say, well, during the time of Musa or during the time of Nur, that all that is canceled unless it is in accordance with what uh, Rasulullah Islam has come with. So you can't get Islam any other way. There's no other source except through the messenger. And that's the Quran, what's in the, the book of Allah, the word of Allah, the speech of Allah, and the sunnah of Rasulullah, the things that he did, what he said, mm -hmm. what he approved of, uh, what he um, was there present for, 
um, and did not uh, and did not um, reprimand the Sahaba for or allow them to do it, which is tacit approval. Those are the only ways. Anything else, anything else, cannot be claimed to be part of Islam. Uh, and 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 so that's that's how you base it. You can't do it any other way. And Allah knows best. Interesting. So one thing I want before we actually get into it because. This is this question is going to lead into um, one of the only. It's, it's not even a defense, but I guess you could call it flailings of people who try to defend this stuff. So you mentioned that you know there were those prophets, there's messengers, um, and I just want to ask a direct question: If Kither, alay salam, was alive during the time of Rasul Sallallahu would Kither still be able to follow his own Sharia, or would he be subjected to the Sharia of Rasul Saisal? Well, um, first thing first, Allah knows best for sure, but we know that Rasul Saisal said in an authentic hadith that if Musa were alive today, and Rasul Saisal talking about in his time, that he would have no choice but to follow me. As in, if Musa was alive or any other the messengers were alive, they would have to follow Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, if we look at that hadith, um, then we can say that uh, Khadr Alaihi Salam, as people say Kither, okay, um, but Khadr would have to have, he would fall under the same category as Musa because uh, Khadr was not necessarily above musa as far as rankings of the messengers of the of the prophets and uh khadr alayhi salam was a he was a prophet <laughs> he, he wasn't just some yeah. some they want to say he just a saint or someone he was a prophet okay uh mm -hmm. but he had some knowledge that was different and and that hadith the authentic hadith in the tafsir of that uh because for some reason people like to mention the story of musa and khadr but they never go into the tafsir and look at it and yes. so Khadr salam actually says to Musa, you have some knowledge that I don't have. And I have some knowledge that you don't have. But our knowledge all put together is insignificant compared to the knowledge of Allah. So uh, Khidr was, was operating in, an, in a different, you know, um, on a different mission, on a different plane, doing some different stuff than Musa salam was. But we know that Rasulullah when he's on the scene, okay, there is no other uh there there is no other avenue except through him even if you're a messenger so rasul sallam explained that clearly so if we look at that hadith i think it is safe to say that even if khadr salam was alive during the time of rasul sallam or alive right now he would be bound 100 percent by the sharia that was completed during the time, during the lifetime of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And of course, Allah knows best. Okay, so let's get right into it. So this this is the first like chapter. They call it book one, or Mubarak Jalani calls it book one, the life of life. And here's the sections. We have the introduction. We have uh, the hidden treasure. Excuse me. The secret of secrets. Kasida Gauzia, the secret of who. Rasala Ruhi, or Epistle of Soul. In the Abiy or quadruplets of Hadrat Sultan Bahu, and this is all by Sheikh Said Mubarak Ali Jalani. So we're gonna go right into the introduction, and we're gonna, and just so you know, like we, there, anybody can challenge us. This is the actual book; it's straight scanned copies of the pages. We put our head around here just in case this people take the PDF and try to promote it more. That let everybody who reads it that this is actually a deviant book that they should not take anything from it. Um, right off the bat, he starts off with ayats from the Holy Quran, um, with no commentary or anything. But one thing that you should notice is that there's certain signs of scholarship, and you can see this very clearly with Mubar Jalani that he doesn't even provide the ayat references in of, of these ayats that he put in here, which is not often like a, a big giant issue. But when usually when people put Quran or Hadith in their books, they put the references. This is ayat so and so. Of Sora, whatever this is hadith from this compilation, etc. Okay, so that's the first part. Well, we get right to page five. Okay, and this is page five. And 
I don't have the program where I can highlight stuff, so you guys have to just read through it, and you're not going to have time to, to read the whole thing. Um, but we're going to cover just a few things. And the first thing I wanted to, to point out, and this is going to come into play um, later on when we're talking about the Rasala Ruhi. So this first sentence, Allah says, Allah, thou art, or not Allah, Mubarak Jalani says, Allah, thou art the king, and none other than thou art worthy of worship. Thou art my master. Okay? That, that word master is very key, and the fact that Mubarak Jalani in his writing, as he should, is anything that is referring to Allah, he is capitalizing. Allah, thou, king, thou, master, thy. So when you go through this book and when you see different references to certain things towards Allah and you see that they're capitalizing the word, someone can't go back and then say, oh, he's not talking about Allah here. And I mean, I'll, I'll kind of spill the beans. Um, when we get to Rasul Ruhi, you'll see that he refers to Allah as master. And, but we're going to get to that in, in a few weeks. Um, did you have anything to add from anything else from this page, Mubarak? Uh, no, not from not from this page. I mean, this page is you know it's pretty it's yeah. <laughs> it's it, it's probably the, the the safest page in the book, probably. Yeah, because actually yeah. she's praising a lot. It's like okay, yeah. yeah, you're safe here. Um, he does also there if you see the last second last uh, sentence of the first paragraph, he says, "I confess my sins." Before thee, O oh my Lord, forgive all my sins because none can forgive save thee. And I only brought that up because in TM way, there are some people who believe that Muwar Jalani is sinless, that he's a perfect Murshid, that he does not make any mistakes, that he does not commit any sins, which here himself he is confessing that he has plenty of sins and he's confessing them before Allah. So let's go to the next page. And again, if you have any questions, if you guys had the time to review this beforehand and there's anything you notice, type them right into the chat and we'll, we will try to address it, inshallah. So on page six, um, this is like where he gets into the whole seven sultan thing, I believe. Um, where is it on the page? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, so the... Yeah, you go down to the, it's like the one, two, three, fourth paragraph on the page. The one that begins with, O Allah, send thy blessings and peace upon thy messenger, Muhammad. And the meme of his wujud, which beholds. So for those of you who don't know, and this gets more into when he starts explaining the whole concept of the seven sultans. When he's referring to Rasulullah as the letter of meme. What he's actually referring to is they refer to it as the mirror of me. In layman's terms, what that is saying is Rasulullah is the mirror of Allah. And when you look into a mirror, what do you see? You see the same exact thing that you yourself, right? So they're in other words, they're saying Rasulullah is the duplicate of Allah which is shirk. There's nothing mm -hmm. to, to Allah. There's nothing that there's nothing that can reflect Allah. There's nothing that, I mean, I don't know how else to really even say this. It's just complete, utter shirk. But here's his first yeah. reference to it. What? And, and, um, and so, yeah. And, and that's why I, um, if we look at, like I said, we, we, we anchor ourselves to like an actual source of the religion. So Rasulullah is saying very clearly, anything that is introduced into the religion that's not part of it, it's going to be rejected. So this is the approach that we take. We reject everything that cannot be proven as a base in the religion. Period. We just reject it outright. So when he says in this paragraph, Oh Allah, send, ble send thy blessings and peace upon thy messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the meme, the Arabic letter in the name of the last messenger of his of his wajud, his being which behold secrets of thy ahdiyat. Now, I don't know, I don't know, and well, 
please uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Someone can call in. I'm sure we'll I'll hear about it. When does Rasul I'm talking about keeping secrets as far as things about the religion and how what you should believe? What you should believe? There's no secret. Rasul Sam doesn't have any. Did, if Rasul Sam were to keep secrets as far as what we should believe about him and about Allah. That would mean that he didn't do his message. I already believe him in the Shaytan Rajim. That he didn't complete his task. His task was to show us every single thing we needed to know, we needed to do, what we needed to believe, as to get as close to Allah as possible. So the very fact that he's talking about which beholds a secret of that ahdiyat beyond oneness, something which only which is only beheld and cannot be defined or described. So the only thing the, the only thing that you can't necessarily define or describe except for what Allah has described of himself which you can describe Allah in the attributes that he gave for himself yep. but if he if if this the 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 author and if this is this is Mubarak Jalani the author here um how does he he's saying it can only be beheld and not can be defined or described that means that you'll never know You'll never know actually uh, what uh, whether what he's telling you will be right or wrong. You'll never know when you'll arrive. This is not Islamic. It's yes. so so right here. If even if this concept was part of Islam, the next thing that should be there is an ayah from Quran that mm -hmm. ties this belief and this understanding to it, or yes. a hadith, an authentic hadith from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These two things are needed. This concept. Is not part of Islam, and based on what we know about Islam, it's like which beholds the secret of of, of ahadiyat, whatever that means. Well, real quick, okay. Let's use a little bit of logic. Just not, not like it's not even logic. Let's use a little bit of math. Mubarak, what is beyond oneness? There's only two options. Oneness in itself means if it's beyond that, it has to be like one point one. It has to be two, right. really. It's more than two. one. So beyond yeah. oneness is more than one, unless it's, it, it could be mm -hmm. two things here. Yeah. It could be a duplicate, mm -hmm. or beyond oneness could maybe mean that there was the one, and then a second one became or joined. Mm -hmm. I mean that's the only two. Yeah. Both are shirk. Both yes, are shirk. Exactly. What's the proof? Pull who Allah had. Allah Samad. Lam Yalid Walam Yulad Walam Yakullahu for one ahead. That's it. If yes. you know that surah, we don't even need to do the translation. Everybody knows. Everybody no, knows. No, there's only one. There's no one else. No one is can can become part of Allah. Allah says, Laysa kamitlihi shay. Nothing's like him. No one would be able to uh, even uh, approach Allah in that way. This is sure to even talk like there's some way that you could possibly become one with Allah. Yeah. Okay. And so if someone wants to say, well, you don't understand, bring the proof, bring the authentic hadith, bring the ayah from Quran. If you bring it from any other source, as we said, the only way that you can introduce something into Islam, it has to come through Allah and the messenger that he sent for you at this time. That's it. You can yep. see these people that want to use Musa and Kither. You can't even use that. You can't even use that as a, and it, it, it doesn't support them in any way, but you can't even use it because Musa and, uh, and, and Kither, that that was a. A, a an, an event. That Quran detailed, but Rasulullah has laid out everything that we should believe and what we should do in our actions and everything that's halal, haram, everything is there. Otherwise, yeah. you would be saying that Rasulullah didn't do his job. So, this here in itself, in this paragraph, this is shirk. And to believe it, <laughs> to believe it is to believe in shirk. And if yeah. you, anyone can say otherwise, then they need to bring the proof. The burden of a proof is on the 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 ones claiming that this is part of Islam. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like right there, and you have to pay attention to the words. Be it sound, it may sound pretty, it may sound nice, it may sound deep, but sometimes there's things that may sound like that. When you actually listen to what's being said, it's absolutely rubbish. 
beyond oneness. Like what Mubarak said, it's either multiple or you become part of that one single thing, which means we're talking about a law. Either you become a law or there's multiple laws or the other option is there's no Allah. So you're either an atheist or a mushrik if you believe that there's something beyond oneness when it comes to Allah. Very, very simple. And it's funny because like my father, who was not a learned man, Muslim used to make mix a lot in English. So from a young kid, I'm here, my father makes a lot in English. And this is the surah he would say every single time it's a lot in English. Say Allah is one. <laughs> Just from you know, from being a kid. So like even the most ignorant or non-learned Muslims should know this aspect and read this line and be like, wait, what? What are you saying? Again, people, we're only on like the second page really of the actual content of, the, of this book. And I like what I'm like saying to the show. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Y'all can hear me? Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This joint been acting up. It was acting up last week. <laughs> All right, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I, I think truthfully that some of this information that we're talking about, I think it's going to go over a lot of people's heads. So, <laughs> what I think we need to do truthfully is just back up a little bit and just kind of come at it from like an ABC type of perspective because all of these fancy words fuck here and this and that and you know all this type of stuff you know if you think about it back in the day i can imagine a lot of um of our fathers you know forefathers being enamored with all of this you know i, I guess hocus pocus type of wording fancy wording yeah. and all of this type of stuff and just kind of just falling in love with this whole bit of mess let's just be mm -hmm. honest bit of mess mm -hmm. um, my wife actually asked me uh earlier she was like you know how you know well, how do you know the book is, you know, it's it's not really authentic and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, because we grew up. We just kind of grew <laughs> Real talk. We just grew up. Yeah. You know, when we were kids, all of this stuff, it was just kind of like a fantasy fairy tale type of vibe. And everyone's kind of still holding on to that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people. This mm -hmm. book is trash. Like, like, bro, I'm serious. It's, just, it's trash. Yeah. Just from a simple, some simplistic analyst analyzing of the book, it's literally just trash. And it's a bunch of little fancy words and stuff where people can kind of get lost. And just like you said, Mubarak, they can play games. You don't know if you don't know what's what, where something starts, where something begins. It's so gray and ambiguous to where you know, people can just flow and make up a bunch of stuff all in between all of this. Mm -hmm. And it has no mm -hmm. basis. Simply put, it has no basis. And when you stack this up with the authentic uh, sunnah of the Holy Last Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's not even close. I mean, this is foolishness. Foolishness. Mm -hmm. And, like and even on top like of that, I, I, would, I would say that for the people who uh, were listening to this, that were at one time, they were Christian, right? And like the whole um like how the trinity trips up a lot of christians and how certain aspects and things that are, that are in christianity that is known paganism they know it's not actually part of any religion or any teachings that Isa that jesus brought they know it but it it feels good and it has like this you know this 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 rom it's like romanticized and they you know it's it's like that they're so caught up in it and this is the same type of this is the same type of feel it's the same type of playbook here where it, it, they they can't actually say well they can't point to anything in quran or sunnah but right it's like close and it feels romantic in the words and and mm -hmm. it's like you know it says some things that you are like well that that's that 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 might be but it's just not. It's yeah. Shaypon uses the same trick. It's the same thing. The same thing he got the Christians with to innovate in their religion and to wind up believing in pure shirk. Yeah. It's the same thing that's in this book. It's the same author. Well, you just think you about just it, right? You just like, simplified it. That's exactly where I was going with it. Just, I mean, come on. It's just a bunch of fancy wordplay. When you when you really sit down and walk a Christian down, you just 
We've all done it. We've all just walked them down with yep. basic questions. They know they can't really justify the Trinity. And it sounds like madness. You know, yeah. <laughs> you go back to layers. It just sounds like a bunch of mumble jumble foolishness. And that's what yep. we have in the book. I mean, a hundred million pages of utter trash. Like seriously. <laughs> so like when Mark mentioned that, how like it, it sounds nice. It feels right. It feels okay. And it, it's just shaped like, what does what's the what's the thing Shaitan wants us like ultimate thing that he wants us to do, and we have plenty of examples of it in the Holy Quran is that, and it kind of ties into like what mankind, like, what we kind of desire our nafs is he tries to get us to convince ourselves that we're God, right? So when you have someone saying, "Hey, you can become divine, you can become one with Allah," it's automatically appealing to this. Uh, a fault that mankind already has in us. Pharaoh claimed that he was a god. Um, uh, I forget the the the, the, the guy that I Ibrahim alayhi salam was dealing with. He said he was a god. Um, so this is something that's happened throughout history. So if you can convince any group of people that there's some kind of path to becoming divine more than a human being, it's the same tactic that's used in like Buddhism, all these spiritual type things like hey, there's a way that I'm going to, you're going to ascend your primitive being. It's the same lingo. It's the same tactics. It's the same old story. So when Islam came and said, no, you are a human. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said in an authentic hadith, I am nothing but a man. Allah says it in the Quran. You are Basha. You are a human being. You So, and those actual things that during the time of the pagans, it's actually in the Quran. They were like, why didn't you send us like an angel or something else to guide us? And the law's like, no, I sent you a man so that you you can like get the correct guidance from a human being like yourselves, right? But now you have someone coming 1,400. I mean, it's, it's nothing new, but another person along the chain of people have done the same thing 1,400 years later and saying, you know what? You could become more than a man. It's bull crap. Well, crap. Uh, <laughs> I've spoken to a, a couple of older brothers, and I'm literally not joking. I don't want to be funny or nothing. I'm I'm trying to be serious, but they were dead serious. They was arguing me down. It was they was literally getting furious and saying that Mubarak Galani was more than a man, and they were not joking. They were not playing. They were absolutely serious. I mean, they was getting hot to where I realized, okay, they they this is serious for them. Let me back up yeah. off of it. Because I was telling them that, no, he's just a man, just relax. And they were getting very upset that I was actually referring to Mubarak Galani as an actual human being. And they were not playing at all. And that's the problem. It mm -hmm. all goes back to this, this the crux of Tiamoy belief. And this is why we've been harping on it for years now. This, this shirkish belief that people are like, well, they're just, they're, you know, they're, they're Muslim and just be good and let them go on. It's like, no, these people have these false beliefs ingrained at the foundational level of their Islam. And mm -hmm. it causes so many problems going forward. Yeah, you're making Salat. Yeah, you know how to make a wudu. Yeah, you know how to do all these, like, you know, other things in Islam that apparently everything's Islamic. But then you have this root belief in yourself that's in this book, that's in this concept of seven sultans, that actually these things take you outside of the fold of Islam. Yeah. And the, and it, it is so dangerous. I mean, it's it's so dangerous um to for 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 this book and books like it and the beliefs that this book is based on because it will it it will waste everything that you do, your salah, your fasting, everything that you do, all the good things that you do. If you have the wrong belief, it will be rejected. Your good deeds will be rejected because your concept, your understanding. I mean, if you're if you are here doing actual ibadat, right? You're do you're praying, you're fasting, and in your mind you think that the divinity that's for Allah alone, Allah's oneness, someone has a share in that. And you're actually, can you imagine you're praying and you're actually, you know, and, and there's been, there's been, there's been statements where people said they put a picture of Mubarak Jelani in front of them when they pray and different things like that. I mean, so can you imagine, you know, you're doing that and then you, you're, you're meeting Allah, it's going to be rejected. Of course, it's going to be rejected. Just think logically. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's like, you know, I mean, that's like you saying, oh, yeah, I, I made this specially for you. And it has someone else's name or embroidered on it or something like that. It's like you're going to be like, hey, I'm not wearing that. I, you know, it's it's like that. You're, you're, you, you can't even feel a human being with that. So you're not going to fool a lot. But the main thing is, is that you really have to look as we go through this book and we're going to continue on. But got to understand, there are no I mean, absolutely zero secrets in this land. Nothing is a secret. If anyone tells you, oh, this is a secret, they're lying. This is from Shaytan. Rasulullah's whole job was to make it as clear as possible, give you everything you could possibly need. As soon as the word secret with a, and that has to do with beliefs or some actions that you can do, it is a charlatan. It's a liar. It's coming from Shaytan. They're trying to trick you. Because oh, only I got this. I or or if they tell you, or if they tell you, you won't be able to, as the, as the book says, you won't be able to uh, understand it unless you behold it. What is this? <laughs> basically, it's like, it, it's basically you're telling you to just believe in this. You won't be able to understand it. You won't be able to rationalize it. You won't be able to even know whether or not you're on the right track or not. Unless you behold it. When will you behold it? The reader doesn't know. The writer doesn't know. No one knows. How are you even reading any further than this page in this book? I want, and, and let's think about this too. Let's think about this for a second. Because this was held as the holy grail of books within the community, right? Yeah. And if we just kind of take a step back, we can understand that our forefathers, our fathers, when they were reading this book, they were younger than us. They, they may have been younger than us. Yeah. So they were, yeah, yeah, they were, they were. They were quite impressionable. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, they mm -hmm. enamored by this guy and they must have read this book and really clung on to it. Really clung on to this belief and idea that they can fly and do all these different things and mold with the law, blend with, you know, school of Islam and all these different things that they probably thought that they could do. Then they pass this information on to, to the children, us, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. we, we kind of grew up like, you know, we heard about the book, you know, we was forbidden to read the book without permission or all this other stuff was going to happen. But just think about that. Our fathers read the, these books, they believed in Mubarak Ghulani. They really thought he was that guy. They thought he could fly and do all these special things. They took all of this information in for real, like seriously talking about. And now they're really still holding on to this. They're holding on to this and they will not relinquish it no matter no matter how foolish this book is, no matter how much it, you know, it contradicts the Holy Last Messenger Sallallahu it contradicts the law. They're holding on to this and they're trying any way possible to try to make it make sense. When I challenged my father with this book, alhamdulillah, he just he just submitted, surrendered, and just admitted that he was just on the Kool-Aid. He didn't put up no resistance. Alhamdulillah, I came in there with my, my, my sword, my shield. I was ready for battle. And we was about to duke it out about this book. Alhamdulillah, he just admitted and humbled himself and just was like, you know, saying, I was, you know, he said whatever he said, we had a talk. And I, that made me respect my father and appreciate him more. You feel what I'm saying? Because that's the yeah. thing. We're all human beings. We're going to make mistakes. Things happen. But you you try to grow and you try to learn from that. You don't just keep on holding on to this foolishness. No, seriously. A lot of these older yeah. brothers who was teaching this book, believed all this foolishness, was teaching this crap in the um, retreats and all that stuff. They owe everyone a big, massive apology. And it takes courage to actually do yes. that. Courage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that, one comment and, we and, have real quick is um, that uh, mentioned that guess guess the first five lines of page six, guess who else proclaims this? Shiite, Qadiani, other Sufi others, et cetera. And they add extra. And that's a good point to make is that, you know, just there's all types of groups claim the same exact thing. But as Muslims, as Sunni Muslims, the criteria all falls back to, is this in the Holy Quran? Is this in the Sunnah of Rasulullah Very simple. And if it's not, then you can and, run away. And when you look at all these, whether it's Qadiani, uh, Shia, um, this uh, Mubarak Galani, uh, TMOA, Goofy Sufi, all of these groups that add a little spice, little extra, this stuff that's not part of Islam, it's all for political 
or financial or some other type of gain. It's always the behind it. Because listen, Islam, like you ain't going to get rich and make money. I mean, you could be wealthy, but you got to do it on your own merit. True Islam, practicing it, preaching it, giving it to other people. You're not going to get rich. You're not going to get rich off of it. You're yeah. not going to become powerful in, 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 about it. The only way really you can you can do that is by, you know, fighting in jihad, maybe conquering lands and countries in the name of Allah, you yeah. know. But as far as you just being a you just being a preacher, I ain't no, you're going to be poor. <laughs> but if you can have something exclusive, if you can have something exclusive and you get yeah. followers and people like you throwing sprinkling money on you and stuff like that, like what they do, yeah. then that's where it comes from. But before we move on on this page, I just want to make it very, very clear on this thing where it says that, you know, that Rasul some the Arabic letter being a meme and, and of his wajud and which beholds a secret of the Ahdiyat beyond oneness, something which is only beheld and cannot be defined or described. Anyone who has this book and believes that anything in this book is true, this statement right here, you have to prove it to be part of Islam with some source. Otherwise, otherwise, you're just negligent. You don't care. You're worse than a Christian because this is what the Christians do. When you tell them where's this at in the Bible, they, uh, yeah, you know, so and so said, or the preacher said, or you know, you know, hey, listen, everything is not in the Bible. You're just like a Christian. We have confirmed sources: Islam, uh, the Quran, and the Sunnah. Find this concept in the sources of Islam. Don't tell me your Sheikh said it, because that's not a source. Don't tell me, well, I heard it somewhere. You're lazy, and you're negligent, and Allah's gonna punish you for it if you. We're going off believing this and you can't tie it. Everything in your life, your whole life is riding on this very concept right now. If you believe yep. this well, without source. Let me play the other end. Let's 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 go to the other end. And let me ask you, you know, what people always say. Well, uh, um, this is just a, po a poetic book. This is just a book of poems. It's not meant to be taken literally. Now, a lot of times when we would corner someone with this information, they would run to saying it's a poetic book. You know, it was just, a, you know, someone's passion, someone's dreams. It wasn't really meant to be a literal source. What would, yeah. you, what would your take be on that? What would your response be? It's that? a very, very, very simple, easy response. And this is a common one they go to. They'll say this about this book. They'll say this about the Rasala Ruhi. They'll say this about anything. Yeah. One, Islamically, you're not allowed to commit shirk literally figuratively or poetically it doesn't matter what you're not allowed to commit shirk, <laughs> right two exactly. if you're saying it's just a poem why the hell are you why are you reading it if you just want to write like if it's not a rap you guys aren't singing it to entertain yourselves you're reading it for knowledge you're taking beliefs from it so if it's just a poem mm -hmm. and it has no meaning whatsoever then why what do we even have in this discussion for yeah. and you're that passionate about a poem you're that passionate I mean, literally, you're clinging onto this joint with your with your molar teeth. I mean, literally, just hanging onto this joint won't let it go for nothing. Yep. For a poem, and you know, I, I mean, doesn't make any sense. To one rhyme, I haven't wanted to one stanza, <laughs> no, no. one verse. Th this yeah. joint is this joint is not poetic. It is it is a hard read. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, so, uh, well, as we know, quick, but I want to mention on to like what you said about how, how um, just and and if you give me some kind, there's. If you give me the ayat, there's an ayat in the Quran, and it's used to usually talk about how it's easy to memorize the Quran, right? The Allah made the Quran easy. Mubarak, if you can help me out. Uh, uh, that Allah, Allah has made the Quran, uh, Quran, made it easy for it to remember, basically. Yeah. That's, this is in Surah Al Qamar. And this is and one of the tough series, and one of the explanations of this ayah too is also applies to Allah has, and I believe there's another ayah to refer to. Basically, what I'm getting at is anybody that says, Oh, you just don't understand. Allah has made Islam so easy to understand. It's one of the beauties of Islam. There's nothing in Islam that any layman cannot understand. When someone says they don't understand anything, that's usually because they don't have the actual evidence to actually understand something, right? Mm -hmm. When you get into like inheritance, something like, I don't understand inheritance. Why? Because they actually don't know the evidence. 
when you actually study yeah. Islam, there's hardly anything you come across. It's like, this is beyond my own comprehension. I don't get it. Yeah. It's not yeah. rocket yeah. science. And it's, it's not yeah. fi like physics. It's none of that. Very easy. Yeah. It's, never, it's never going to... It's never going to be something where you are struggling to understand it when it's explained to you. The very fact that this in this book is saying, well, it can't be, you know, you can't, um, it cannot be defined or described. This ain't even Islamic because even the most intricate things like inheritance law and all that, it can be figured out. Maybe you're, a person may not be smart enough to figure out the formula, which I still challenge a person. They, they got to be, I mean, as long as you take your time, you can figure it out. But when it's explained to you, right? If I explain to you, your father gets one sixth of the inheritance or your two daughters gets two thirds or whatever. That's very easy to know. Once someone tells you, this is what you do. The practice of Islam is easy, mm -hmm. you know? And now if a person's trying to figure out, you know, uh, different things as far as some fitness is concerned, maybe there's some, some intricacies as far as um, deriving a ruling Everybody can't derive a ruling, but the ruling to carry out the ruling and follow it yeah. is easy. Yeah, it's yeah. never going to you're never going to be just like boggled down. Like, I mean, when it's time for Lord of Salah, I mean, it's, it's, it's four units. No one is ever going to be like, man, I, I can't figure out how, how this works. No, nah, yeah. maybe the, maybe your first time. Right. But Islam is easy like that across the board. It's, it, it's not hard to figure out. It is not hard to practice. Uh, and as far as to know what to practice and how to practice, there's nothing confusing or secretive about it. Alhamdulillah. Shukran, uh, Jawad. Uh, you put that information in here that we was trying to get out. Yeah. You know, so, so I want to bring so, up one um, more down, thing. Uh, or go ahead. Go ahead, Mubarak. You got it. Go ahead. I got yeah. two more points oh, I, on this I was page just gonna before, say, well, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say down the down the page in the next paragraph where it's talking about Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani and Sultan Bahu and, you know, Mir and Mir, me and Mir. I mean, that is a that is like a just just a, you know, it's just a web we could get tangled up in trying to. I mean, I, I don't even I mean, these people, we could we could delve off into these people and whether they should, you know, we could we could cut their legs out from under them or whatever. But I say. Eh, we don't even need to worry about it. If he wants to make dua for them, and that, okay, great. Uh, that's 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 to me, it's it's not that relevant. So I, I was just gonna say we don't really have to delve into, you know, even. I, I guess we got to deal with Sultan Bahu, but we can deal yeah. with him later. Um, yeah, and and I, and that's what they and this is if for anybody that doesn't know. This this is a classic cult leader tactic. You attach yourself to the to people that, uh, that in the past that hold high regard. Sultan Bahu did the same thing with the whole Sultan concept. He tried to attach himself to Fatima Radiallahuanha, Hassan Basri, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani, Imam Ali, Khalifa Ali. Like you attach yourself, you say these names, and then automatically it's just like a psychological point. It's like people start attaching you with those names. You know, it's very, it's very easy to do that. Just like people who are scam artists, what do they do? They make sure they have a nice car that they're driving. They make sure they have at least one pristine, nice suit that they might wear all the time. But when they, they when you when they walk in the room, they're like, "Oh, he belongs here. He's rich. He's important. Look at the Rolex on him, mm -hmm. right?" I, I just we, I was just at a sales thing. Like when we we go on these vacations, one of the scams is you go and you hit listen to a sales pitch. You get like discounts at the at the resorts or whatever. And right. you know, the guy walks in, he's got his Rolex, like make sure it's outside the sleeve to show it, you know, dress nice, got some designer shoes on and all that. That's all part of the sales pitch. That's all part of it, right? He has the pictures on the walls of all his vacation. This is all part of the sales pitch. Because you hear Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jelani, you're like, oh, yeah. No one heard of Sultan Bahu, so, I'm, you know, he was setting that up for a later thing mullah shah what this guy is i don't know who he is but maybe he's somebody that like oh look at this and then if you don't know them you're automatically feeling inferior because like who's this guy i should i should know him you know yeah yeah, yeah. but um mm -hmm. i want to you're gonna love this part really i like pointing out parts that are actually true but actually contradict what he's saying so right here he says and this is this is an important part look at my mouse he says i bear witness that after Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, there will not be another messenger, true, nor anybody will receive a book, true, or law, true, establishing new creed or faith within or without Islam. This is absolutely true. 
So why does he do it? Why does he do it? <laughs> I mean, yeah, and if we look at the paragraph just above that, where he's talking about Sultan Bahu the fifth, uh, well, he's talking about Qadir Jilani is the third, mm -hmm. and Sultan Bahu is the fifth, yep. Sultan of Fakr. So, like we said, what does Sultan of Fakr have to do with Islam? Did Rasulullah mention it? Did Allah mention it anywhere? Uh, did any of the Sahabas mention it as far as Rasulullah talking to them about it? Oh. If you go from here tonight or whenever you see this, and you have any belief in this concept whatsoever, you have to tie it to what Rasulullah said and instructed you to. If you don't, you're worse than a Christian. Mm -hmm. You're worse than the Christians who just, you know, it doesn't matter. If, if they, they, right now, they're pastors and they're, 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 um, they're scholars and they're ulama, they're Christians, they're saying, well, you know what? We can have LGBT gay priests now. And they have them. Standing on the member, standing in the pulpit, giving the the Sunday sermon. Yeah, they, they 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 switch it up. They do whatever they want to do. Yep. this is the same thing. All right. It has to be based on something. I got a question. Um, this paragraph that you just th these few lines that you just highlighted, uh, Jaffer. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, that's 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 very troubling, because it 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 almost how old was Mubarak Galani when he wrote this book? Because this is getting a little ridiculous now. Like, how, how old was he? Maybe next, mid thirties, mid thirties, or oh, God, so uh, well, he was. So he 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 passed away when he was eighty something. This was right. written in nineteen eighty one. So if if two years ago he was eighty something, we're talking about eighties is what forty years. So he wrote it when he was in his like thirty forties. Okay, because I was hoping that maybe he wrote it in his 20s when he was just a young boy trying to figure some things out and got a little drunk off his own juice. Because for him to say this paragraph right here, it doesn't make it, it literally doesn't even make any sense. Okay, someone said he was 45 years old. No, I'm, I'm not even trying to be funny. This is, I'm starting to actually get a little concerned. Like, was he a little Medj Noon? Was he just kind of in it? I, this had to have been. This don't even make any sense. Why would you put this paragraph well, in here? You're, and you're this kind of what you're asking leads into the next okay. point I wanted to bring up. And anybody with a keen eye, not even a keen eye, just pay attention, right? Oh, and when you when things are written or when things are said, when things are said or not said, ask yourself why did they say that or why didn't they say that, right? So like the question you guys should be asking right now throughout this whole book is why hasn't there been one ayat or one hadith provided for source or support for anything that has been said so far? Well, the re the answer is no. because there's not. So the next one, I want you to ask you a question. Why did he say this statement right here? I bear witness that the promised Mahdi and Jesus, son of Mary, have yet to appear. And neither I nor any one of my followers have claimed anything like that. Why would anybody on earth, an Islamic scholar, anybody, ever make that claim. It's like, I never said there's a Mahdi yet or claim that I'm the Mahdi or they're here yet, right? For instance, like if I walked in a room and someone out the blue said, I did not steal your money. What, what, what do you mean? I didn't ask you about my money. <laughs> that means, that, that means somebody did. <laughs> exactly. Or be like, you know, you walk in the room like, I didn't kill nobody. I didn't kill anyone, you know, yes. I, I'm innocent. Like. Hey, yo, someone obviously has been killed here. And so yes. the thing is, we could we we could actually we won't, but we could actually stop right here and wrap it up. The case will be closed based on these two statements because he's saying yeah. I bear witness that after Muhammad uh sallam, there will be no other messenger nor anybody will receive a book uh, or law establishing a new creed or faith within or without Islam. So, yeah. so he's saying that it will nothing new nothing new mm -hmm. so therefore you have to based on this book you have to prove yes. whatever it is of the sultan Good bahu point. the seven sultans you have to prove it based on the quran and sunnah you have to he's telling you right here in the book Good so point. if you can't there's and no if secrets. you don't he just establish there's no secrets there's yeah, no new right. secrets. Nothing new is oh. coming. There's no secrets. And he just, <laughs> by your own shake's words, he puts y'all in a hole that y'all cannot, you cannot even use 
Musa Kither anymore. You cannot use secrets. You cannot yeah. use lack of understanding. Now he has put you on the hole that you actually have to provide proof in the Quran and Sunnah I'm gonna because go out, nothing okay. new is coming. Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb here and just try to see if I can piece this whole thing together. Because I was trying to, you, you know, we, we've been trying to read the book recently to just be up to speed. It's been a, I'm talking about a tough read. I'm, it's been a hard read. But what I'm getting is after we're kind of just breaking this thing down, what I'm kind of coming to the understanding of, I think maybe Mubarak Galani was having like a real spiritual struggle while he was writing this book. Like, because he's saying certain things that is accurate, is true, and then it seems like, you know, one of the, you know, the, the uh, shared teams or something gets a hold of him the next day, and then he, you know, he wrangles them up a little bit, and then he just starts jotting off some crazy paragraphs, because it doesn't, well, it just seems it's not that, it it's not cool. that, it's not that, because here, I'm going to point out, all of this is manipulation, so if we go back to the actual true statement he said, Right, it's to set up something. You have to look at the subtleties, and we, so he says, "I bear witness that after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there will not be another messenger, nor anybody will receive a book or law establishing a new creator faith within or without Islam." The key words that he put in here that he wanted to implant in people is a book or law. What is law in Islam? Sharia. What is the common mm -hmm. common defense of the Sufi stuff? This has nothing to do with Sharia. This is Tasawwuf. He's establishing in their minds, like, basically, there's, yeah, there's no new law coming, right? But the stuff I'm going to talk about is going to deal with Tasawwuf, spiritualism, but law is something different, right? Because right after this, he goes right into, what does he talk about? Ilham, inspiration to the saints and the Sufis and all these different, he goes right into it. That was all set up to let them know, like, what I'm saying is legit. Because I'm not talking about Sharia. I'm not saying I got a new Quran. I'm not saying I'm a new messenger. Where I'm not claiming to be the Mahdi. I'm not claiming to be um, Isa alayhi salam. Right? I'm basically claiming I am a saint that I got Elham. That's the whole thing. And, and on top of that, and on top of that, mm -hmm. um, he also, because he's Pakistani, the little, you know, in, in Pakistan, I believe the uh, Qadianis are... Um, they're declared to be kufr yes like the the the, the qadiani so it, it, like like it's still like as far as the state is concerned they're like these people ain't muslim yeah uh and so that's one thing the, the qadiani say that there's a messenger after yes. and they have some weird things so he's so this is also him establishing that i ain't no qadiani either he's trying yeah. to because back then in 1981 the qadiani's probably was getting fired up they were probably was yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure uh that they was like they they could not openly uh claim and talk about their beliefs so Correct. that's another thing also where he's saying that uh he's bearing witness that um uh asa bin maryam has not appeared in the mahdi and all this because many people and most of them that i have seen have been indian or pakistani which is basically the same thing that have claimed to either be Isa bin maryam or have claimed to be the mahdi or claim to have known both of them or one or both of them it all been people from Pakistan or the subcontinent somewhere like that. So he's also trying to distance himself from those some of those people because they have been proven to be kind of whack jobs and, and some some nut jobs or whatever. So he's mm -hmm. he, he's not only so and the thing is to Hussein's point about how it seems like he's saying some truth and then going off the right because he's trying to set up a, a, a scam. He's yeah. trying to set up a scam, but with Islam. So there's gonna be some truth, and so he has to use Islam as the bait. But then slip his little stuff in there yep. as the hook, you know, to 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 then get get his little cult started. So yep. that's why it's like some truth and some falsehood and truth and falsehood because that's that's what a cult's gonna be. That's what that's what a charlatan is gonna do. A little bit of truth get you in, hook you with the falsehood. What's I have another question. Is have that two question. people after reading this book? I know of two people, hands on experience. So it's not like hearsay, like hands on experience. Two people that read this book after they read the book. They actually claim themselves to be the Mahdi, which make whatever you want out of whatever that's supposed to be. But I know two people that read this book, after they read the book, they were going around telling people that they were the Mahdi. So that's, and, and also tying it to current day today, right? We have Mubarak Jelani himself, 20, about 20 years after writing this book, claiming that he met Imam Mahdi multiple times right 
you have followers claiming that they met Imam Mahdi. You even have some people that in, have claimed that his son, they've announced that his son, Noor, is allegedly the Mahdi. So read this statement again, and now fast forward to today, and it's like, yeah, you, you made this claim, but then you still fell into your own trap, and you're refuting yourself. So you didn't make that claim 40 years ago, but your followers and yourself are making this claim now decades later. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I, I, have, I have a couple questions. Uh, first question is, anyone who has read this book, you know, from the first original 200 copies or whatever, were there any uh, older brothers that actually spoke out or spoke against it and just was like, nah, this is, this is, this is trash. And I'm going to just kind of expose it. Was there anybody who actually did that? That um, came of or because it's it's a hard it's hard for me to believe that any I don't care if they was in their early twenties mid twenties you're reading this book you believe in Islam you realize it's going off the rail a little bit like do you was it anybody who was like nah this joint ain't cool and started trying to kind of like spread the word that maybe this is a little little scammy that's a that's a good question I I've not I'm not aware of any. The the only the only thing that I know of is one time my um my father was telling me about a brother who um who kind of uh, was on the scene when Jelani first kind of showed up and uh, according to my dad I know he's gonna say I misquoted him but basically the guy uh, thought himself as kind of like a big shot and instead of following Jelani he took the book. And the concepts or whatever, and started his own junk, oh. and started running his own kind of cult junk. <laughs> That's what he said. He took, so he took I mean, the product and started but, his own. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He just was like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do this junk. And actually, uh, because I was mentioning that there was a that uh, there was a guy whose account was in the book, and then got taken out. Yeah, and you're saying that was so. That was one of the people like in the first book, I guess. Uh, he had an account or whatever in there about his dreams or his you know mushahida whatever you want to yeah. call it and then um it was taken out afterwards and the reason why is because he stopped following jelani yeah and started just, doing his own thing and started his own job how big of a red flag is that right yeah. like how yeah. it's like if if this is like the, one of the claims that people have to, we're gonna have to wrap up a little bit so if you have any questions type them in the chat um Uncle Dulavim said that there were people, and maybe we could chat about that in the room and kind of maybe get some more information on yeah. people that actually did refute and like what happened when they did refute that. But just to go back to what Mark said about the there's two accounts. This this book, one of the big sections of the book is um, documentation of these ex, these holy experiences that the followers of Mubarak Jelani allegedly have had. Right? They don't they don't call them dreams. They call them mushahadas basically um miraculous experiences right with going to the courts of Rasul Sallam, seeing a law talking to a law talking to Rasul Sallam, etc etc and they and he part of this book is him explaining and justifying how this is actually true right this and it basically sums up to like they were receiving ilham right divine inspiration so if if what these people experienced was true and came from Allah, it was divine inspiration, right? You would, no matter what happened to that person afterwards, you would not remove it and say, I don't want people to know about it now, right? Because in a, in a perfect example of this is like, because when something is true, you don't hide it. Because there's plenty of, there's, there's, there's several instances in the Holy Quran where Allah is like chastising Rasul as Muslims. If we were like, we wanted to, like, say we were trying to hide it and we wanted, because, like, we would, like, oh, let's get rid of any of those IF that, like, paint, that could possibly paint or sort of some in a negative light. Let's just get rid of those, right? That would be a clear red flag that will, like, obviously they're trying to hide something. It's not true. Like, for instance, like, when we're talking to Islamophobes, the stuff they bring up, oh, he married Aisha, she was nine. We don't hide it. It's in Hadith documented for thousands of years. All these different things that, we were like, oh wait, we don't want people to find out about that. Let's get rid of it. How many, how many different things 
can we point to in Islam where we tell the absolute truth because we believe it to be true and it's from Allah and it's going to provide guidance no matter what happened after that. When you have a book that says, oh, all this is true, well, you know what? Oh, that guy doesn't believe in me no more. Let's get rid of his account. Yeah. How many, I wonder yeah, how many book. people yeah. of these documentations, and maybe Uncle Abdul Adim and Uncle MJ and any of the older brothers can help us with this, out of all these narrations in this book, how many of these people today actually still follow Babar Jelani? I, I would like to have those numbers to see like, okay, nine out of these 10 of these people don't follow him anymore. Yeah, I would even go as I would go further and say, how many people right now even really hang on to this book? Like, how many people would dare to present this book? You know, like, let's say like at the retreat or something, they start reading out of this book. I don't think it would happen. I think the the cat's out the hat. Uh, um, I actually think too that Mubarak Galani probably realized that this book was real sketchy. So he started trying to put some little stipulations. Oh, don't don't read it, or you'll you know uh, you'll get possessed, and kind of like spooking yeah. people, or you know saying, oh, you know, uh, um, you need permission. You need to go through a chain to get permission. And it's, this book is so sacred and secret. It, it's only been fifty copies, whatever the copies. I think maybe he was doing that as a way to kind of dissuade people to not actually read the book, honestly, yeah. because. Yeah. Who's, who's hanging on to the book now? Who's who's presenting this book? What did the Christians do in the past, right? Only yeah. the only certain people were allowed to learn how to read Latin or whatever it was, the language yeah. was in. Only certain people are allowed to actually have copies of the Quran. People that are not the Quran, their their Bible or their holy book. If people actually taught people to read, they were burned at the stake. If they actually did translate it, they were killed and called upon. So it's the same. It's, it, it's the same template. Hey, hey, listen, you can even run the tag. It's the same template. Even what did they do? And, and like I said, all of these things always run back to money, power, or something else. What's another instance where a group of people were kept from reading or learning? <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe our slaves. ancestors? <laughs> yes, the slaves. Why were the slaves kept from reading or learning uh, being educated so that they wouldn't catch on to the whole rules, the whole setup. They were telling them uh, about Christianity. They were telling them that, you know, the black people were cursed or whatever, and this is God's way of saving you, all types of things. Yeah. It doesn't matter, Dif different things they were telling. If a person can't read, a person can't, you know, uh, read something for themselves, um, then you can tell them anything. Yep. And so this is the thing. This is one of the tactics. It's like, yeah, don't read this. Don't read this. Don't read it. Now nah, it's too much for you. X, Y, Z, or you just don't understand or whatever. As long as they can keep you in the dark and ignorant, then they got you. They have the power over you. I mean, and so this is this is this, this concept goes against the Islamic where Allah, the first thing that was revealed, Iqra' bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq, that to, to read and to, 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 to seek the knowledge. We so that you know, so that you would be in, in, in power. Not to read certain books. We was being instructed to only read select books that Mubarak Galani was giving people. We were forbidden yeah. to read outside books, you know, outside of what he was prescribing. And even in my early 20s, I thought that was real weird. I'm like, yo, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. You can only read a couple of yeah. handful full of books that you're prescribing like and, and even even on that right like so we remember i mentioned last week about the author of the the, the heavenly ornaments or the behishti's aware the one that talks like about the grave worshiping and you know yeah. mark Jelani praises the author and says you know in, the, in in this book and then you know 40 years later we have his daughter quoting from the book basically speaking out against the practices of tmoa grave worshiping and all these different things also in the book it talks about all these criteria of how to find a competent morsheed, a competent sheikh, which go directly like if you followed it, nobody in TMA would follow Bobar Jelani. So Bobar Jelani first goes and says, read, he gets his book out to people, read this book. Everything in it is true. You could follow it. Then years later, decades later, he changed and said, no, only read the first volume. The rest don't read. Why? Because the second and third and fourth volumes are all the stuff that refutes them. The first volume is only about like how to make salat and how to make wudu. Yeah. So it's like, 
Like you had, it's the same kind. It's the constant thing. Same thing they did as the Bible. When the Bible started, like they took out the stuff that had the references about black people being cursed. Why? Mm -hmm. They wanted to keep all these black people being Christian. So like, let's get rid of that part. Let's retranslate it. Let's change it up. Mm -hmm. And we know about this with the Bible. They keep changing the words, changing the translations, getting rid of whole sections to make it more appealing to the people so that people don't leave it. So it's, gonna, it's the same concept. I, I would say this too. The mere fact that he tried to push this book onto you know, a handful of African Americans just really lends to the idea or notion of how he really thought and felt about those brothers, you know, our fathers. I mean, he must have really thought they were buffoons. I'm just going to just keep it real. He must have thought that they were just stupid, uh, ignorant, buffoonish, and I'm about to just spoon feed y'all this baby food. Y'all just going to eat this baby food, take this baby food, and that's it. And literally, and, truth be told, that's literally what happened. And here we are. Yeah. So. And the, and the thing is, it's, it's a couple of things at play, though, because um, when you <laughs> sometimes when you when you when you start doing stuff and it works, you start feeling yourself. Right. So right. he probably was like, let me see if I can do a little because you got to remember, Jelani was part of the other Sufi group. Right. And then if you look at it, that junk. Is, is a little, they run in the scan, they run in their own scan. But then if you look like, if you, there's a certain type of person, it's always like, you know what, man? It's just like, you, it's like you, 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 you're working for someone who running a business, right? Yeah. And it's like, I'm gonna start my own business. That's yeah. what he did. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's just the, it's the story of, of life, basically. He was in a scam called, once he realized, man, this joint is kind of a scam. I can do this myself. So, yeah. Yeah. He was going around trying to try trying to find you know a little spy. I already like went to the UK and some other places. But the thing is, he started out you know on one tip, but once he started rolling, yeah, he, he just started feeling himself more and more. And and again, this is not this is not a dig to our forefathers or anything like that. It, it really isn't. I mean, you guys was in your early twenties or whatever. You know things and, happen, and they had the new the new shahada zeal, like yeah, yeah this. I mean, want to soak up everything, so we know what was going on during that time in the sixties, anyway, with the whole you know uh, the black revolution and you know all this type of stuff, and we know what was going on. So I feel like they were vulnerable. This is what I honestly think. I feel like they were very vulnerable and just got taken advantage of. The real beef I have, I don't even have beef with that because we all get caught up. We all get caught in the fall, hoodwinked or whatever, you know what I'm saying, or caught up. When you come out of those type of situations, a loss of dollar gives you the ability to see further down a road. You can see now. You understand and acknowledge, okay, these are the mistakes I made. You know, this happened. I was teaching my kids this. I was teaching my children that, my wife this. Summon some courage. Have some courage about what you're, you know, where you're going with the whole situation and try to correct it. You cover a bad deed with a good deed. You know, if you commit a bad deed, you follow that up with a good deed or something greater. You feel what I'm saying? So that, you know, maybe a lost dollar might wash that away and bless, you know, your intentions. I don't understand why these guys 30 years, 40 years later, gray in their beard. Okay, y'all got, got caught up when y'all was in your early 20s or whatever. Y'all have gray in your beard now. Y'all know. <laughs> Y'all are in the twilight years of your life. Knock it off. You feel what I'm saying? Do the right things. Stop being I'm sorry. Stop being cowards. Stop being cowards. Do the right thing. Admit the truth. Admit the truth to your families. That's what you should be doing. Because you're not going to present this book. You wouldn't dare read this book to them. You wouldn't do it. None of y'all would do it. Yeah. <laughs> y'all got the books. Exactly. The books still hidden. Forty years later, y'all still hiding the book. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here. We went over a little fifteen minutes. But I'll be for everybody sticking with us. So we're gonna continue on next week. Um, I'll just some closing statements, Mubarak. If you can uh, close this out with some final thoughts or some ayats. But in the meantime, yeah. we're gonna be back again. Inshallah, every Thursday. Um one hour episode we're going to cover this book until we finish it 
Um, once we, again, we would like you guys, if possible, I put the link to the book in the chat. If you lose it, contact us. We'll give you the copy or a link to the, to the book so you can read it. We want people to read it themselves because every person that reads it is going to notice something different. It's going to notice some other type of error. This is like we're only on, we spent two weeks, right, about maybe two hours now all together, and we've covered now up to page six. And once you'll see, once we start getting going, it might be, it might be tough in the beginning. We're going to, it's going to be slow going through each page, each page, each page. Well, a lot of this stuff is going to get repetitive. We're going to have, we're at a certain part, we're going to like say, look, another reference to shirt, another reference to a law being multiple people are splitting up. And, you know, we're going to keep doing that and yeah. really drive it home to people especially in the in the group of tm away of like this is straight up falsehood right you have to abandon it and to anybody else who's watching so they can recognize the cult manipulation the deviation in their own groups from their own cult leaders so it's a it's a, it's a nice case study to look at we're going to take as many weeks as it takes to get through this if you have any questions in in the in people in tm away like the founding fathers the older heads or whatever like Brother Muckman, who's on Facebook now rambling or whatever, if you have rebuttals, we will take your rebuttals seriously. We will address them. We will bring them on. We'll, we'll present your case exactly how you present your case. Preferably, we would like you to even just come on here and go ahead and defend it if you have if you want to defend it. You want to tell us that we're wrong about something? Feel free to do it. We will put it, we'll give everybody the opportunity to say their piece, to defend their beliefs, and we will defend our statements. And if we're wrong about something, we'll admit to everybody that we're wrong. But we would ask you to do the same thing. So don't be afraid. Don't be scared. This is your belief. Defend it. This is this is the last thing I'm gonna say. I know I've been I've been talking way too much on this episode, <laughs> but I just get a little passionate about this because it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So it's 80 to 85 percent of the community doesn't even know about this silly book. Like really, they don't. When, if you ask, you know, people, you know, a little bit younger than us, they're not going to know what we're talking about. For who to have? For who to have? Who? They're not even going to know. They're not even going to know how to pronounce. It. I'm serious. They're not going to know how to pronounce it. They're not even going to know what we're talking about. This is specifically. I hate. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm saying it. This is specifically for a lot of these old head brothers who poison the communities with this foolishness. This is for y'all. And this and are still doing it. And still doing it. We're talking about y'all. Knock it off. Stop drinking a silly Kool-Aid and stop poisoning the youth. Stop it. Just stop it. Because again, that a lot of them, this is this is going to weigh over their head. A lot of them is not even going to know what we're talking about. That's why I was talking about so, when I first came in. Real quick, to- real quick, I gotta interrupt you. So oh. Abdul Mukman, see, like you you gotta stop playing these childish games. So now you're in here listening to it. You got in late, you'll comment later where no one's really going to properly respond to you in a comment section. You can comment right now. We'll wait for you. Go ahead. You're on here. You're on here right now. Go ahead and comment. You can even enter. I'll put the link in the chat so you can even come in the room live. You can come on live if you'd like. Like, stop playing these, like this, this is what we're talking about. These silly, silly games that you guys play. Hold on one second. <laughs> uh, I'm going to link a, in there. Uh, spoiler alert. I'll stay up a little late for you. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Okay. Not, let, let. not about to comment. Nothing. There's a link. Come on in the room. <laughs> like, we don't want to hear. We don't want to read you know, your like, comments but, later. And you're not going to say anything. But, re- make some vague references to nothing that has no support of nothing. Like, you got to stop doing this. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he's working late. He was trying to get catch the show on time, but he just, you know, he just got in late. And now, you know, he's just trying to get set up. Maybe he hasn't eaten. He's trying to get some dinner in or whatever and doesn't have time to be typing or talking or whatever. So uh, just uh, let us know when you do have time. And uh, <laughs> we'll try to accommodate, inshallah. Tell you what, let me uh, let me do um, the, uh, the IS 26 and 27. And if by then he's ready, uh, we'll deal with it. If not, we'll we'll close out. How about that? That'll work. All right. So, um, uh, so uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, ayat number twenty-six and twenty-seven, 
And so what does Allah say? إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَسْتَهِي أَنْ يَضْرِبَ مَثَلًا مَا بَعُوضَةً فَمَا فَوْقَهَا Indeed, Allah is not timid. Allah is not shy to present an example of that of a mosquito or what is even smaller than that. And those who have believed know that it is the truth from their Lord. Uh, but as for those who disbelieve, they say, what did Allah intend by this as an example? Is He misleads many thereby and guides many thereby. So with the Quran or with these examples, these parables, that people get misguided by him and people believe him by him. But Allah gives the the, the qualifier. That the people that get misled, they even though they have Islam or the Quran or the Sunnah, you know what Allah said, but they still wind up misguided is because they are they're defiantly disobedient. And this is an example. These people are disobedient. Allah and his messenger, Allah tells you, Islam has been completed. Rasulullah says, anything that is tried been and put into the religion of Al-Islam will be rejected. Don't follow the, uh, the innovations. Allah tells us this, but what happens? People will go over and over again about this book and about many other things to dealing with this uh, group, TMOA, and they will, instead of, of Obeying Allah and the Messenger and sticking to Islam, they run with these other things and then they wind up misguided. Even though they might quote, they, they might very rarely, they might quote some Quran or a fabricated a hadith or something like that. But in particular, Allah uses the example of a mosquito. But what is a mosquito if we think about it? What does a mosquito do? A mosquito simply lives its life trying to fulfill its desire. It has a desire to eat. Now, how many mosquitoes get smashed, killed, squashed, destroyed, just trying to fill the, fill the other desires? They will land their nose, trying to suck some blood, just oblivious to the reality of the fact that it's, the, it's, it's extremely dangerous. Eh, they don't know, just a mindless mosquito. And what do they do? They consume and fulfill their desires to the point where they're incapacitated. If you've ever seen a mosquito, when it actually ate its fill completely, they can barely fly. They literally can't move, incapacitated, like bedridden or something, right? So a mosquito, they literally did everything, fulfilled all their desires, and then can't even move, and then they just die. They literally can't even carry themselves. So this is a thing that we have, even Allah used the mosquito, and that's the life of the mosquito. And we should not be like that to where we just fulfill our desires our whole life to the point where we're basically incapacitated and we live the ends of our lives, basically, I mean, maybe even bedridden, can't even move, can't walk, can't do anything for ourselves until we wind up being killed by anyone who's near us or whatever the case may be. We have examples of that, but I won't go into too much detail on that. But let's pay attention. But what does Allah, Allah even goes further to say about the people who wind up getting misled? And this is some of the characteristics. This is not me saying it. Allah gives some of the characteristics of the people who wind up being misled. The fasting, the defiant, the disobedient. What do they do? الَّذِينَ يَنْقُضُونَ عَهْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مِثَاقِهِ وَيَقَضَعُونَ مَا أَمْرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصَلَ وَيُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ what does Allah say? Those people who break covenants of Allah after contracting it and sever that which Allah has ordered to be joined and cause corruption on the earth, those people are the losers. So when Allah says they break the covenants and sever those things with Allah ordered that they be joined, what do we know for sure that they do? Rasulullah says very clearly, you cannot forsake your brother for more than three days. It doesn't matter what you got going on. What do they do? They sever it. They tell you, don't talk to this person. It doesn't matter if you're your father. It doesn't matter if it's your brother. It doesn't matter who it is. Sever it. They break the family ties. It is a point. It is part of the like the constitution of TMOA. They break fit the family ties. And Allah has ordered the family ties to never be broken. It's a major sin. It's a strong, Allah is strong point. Allah is giving the exact the exact description of TMOA in this thing. Mm. They break the family ties. They break the bonds of brothership, brotherhood. They deceive the people and they cause corruption in the earth. So 
almost every ayah you can go through, it will pertain to what they are doing. Don't look at it and brush it off. Look at this and say, are we breaking things that Allah has ordered to be to be upheld? Yes, the answer is 100% yes. If you don't know that you cannot break the family ties, now you know. You, a person can never forsake their father. They can never do it, or their mother, or their brother. A Muslim's uh, salams are supposed to be returned. These are things that Allah has ordered and his messenger has, 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 has given us from Allah of what we should do and how we should conduct ourselves. But these people actually go out of their way and as a standard for their belief and their actions. And it is a standard for you to be part of the group that you have to actually sever the things for what, that Allah ordered to be kept together. So may Allah protect us from that. This is very clear. Anyone who denies it, then they would need to bring their proof otherwise. But may Allah protect us. I mean, did the brother, uh, so we'll stop there, but did the, did, 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 the, did the brother come on? No, but uh, um, one of these comments got me tripping right now. I'm trying to behave. Alhamdulillah. Beautiful ending. Yeah. Very well articulated. And, uh, we'll, we'll leave it there, inshallah. Like I said, no, he's I one real quick thing, and when I was reading like the tafsir on these ayats, I, I one thing stood out to me is the, there's a there's a, a word of a facet that uh -huh. I think refer they, they mentioned how it refers to like a mouse, right? And a mouse, like I think it was a mouse that was, but it only comes out to like cause problems, comes out like and just like basically cause issues. Mm -hmm. And you look at mm -hmm. when certain people i'll leave the names out of it when they do when these people from tmo do actually come out into the public and actually try to like say anything and refer to their beliefs all they're doing they don't actually defend anything all they do is look to try to cause havoc whether it's like accuse people of things um slander people threaten people say a bunch of nothing so it, it just reminded me of like that's the same activity of like when the mouse does it comes out at night digs in your food or like roaches mm -hmm. you know lights on they disappear lights yeah. go out they come out cause a bunch of problems and then run back and hide again oh. and that's literally how everybody in tmo has been that has actually even thought about trying to defend the beliefs they come out very, you see them for a day scary. or two then you never see them again very scary very jittery it's like yo mm -hmm. if y'all don't stop like <laughs> roaches it's, it's, yeah it's <laughs> I'm open. You're, you're a Muslim. You feel what I'm saying? Muslims have debates all the time. This is regular, normal. Stop being yeah. so scary. Yeah. Stop being so sensitive. Get your keister over here. Whoever this brother was. I, well, actually, I do know this brother. I got some stories about him, but I'm like I said, I'm not. I'm being. I'm being so serious. You know, my, so yeah. hopefully he comes on and he he kicks some knowledge. He gives us. He he gives us a nice sitting down. He sits us down and he tells us what's what about this book. Because again, we're all looking for it. We're all hoping for it. Please, please shed some light, correct us, educate us. We know it's not going to happen because again, you, you have to have some foundation of Islam. So, it, you know, you know what, yeah. you know what, the truth has never been afraid of, of a debate. Facts. Facts. Winning a debate, losing a debate, whatever, right? Never. No one, no one with the truth has ever been afraid to like say take the stand right. right where were you at 12 or 1 p.m i was in my bed sleep i don't right. care what you bring as far as evidence stories witnesses video cameras i know i was in my bed sleep and i'm going to keep telling you the truth whether you believe me or not and no falsehood female, hides and falsehood no runs and hides and avoids to stop me from telling the truth about the religion of islam like even if i had a leader and she was she happens to be a female god forbid but even if i had a leader she was a female and she's telling me no don't go tell the truth to those people i'm going to notify her i'm telling the truth i'm going to defend what i believe and defend the the honor and integrity of islam because it's the truth yes i have a you know i have a duty to the people to give them the truth so if i have the truth I'm going to go and, and, and express that. I'm not going to, oh, well, she said I can't do it. So let me, that don't even make any sense. 
I mean, I mean, look at this. Okay, could y'all imagine just like you're dying, you're on your deathbed, and like you already know. I mean, I'm about to meet a law or whatever, and you literally are dying, and you never once said the truth out loud to anybody. You never defended what you believed in. Yeah. You never told the truth that what you believed in might not be true. You're you're taking you're taking things to your grave that could have helped people to realize what the, the guidance or to realize what they were on was falsehood and to correct themselves. You're gonna take that to the grave with you? Really? It's scary. I mean the the, the the, the statement of a coward dies a thousand deaths. Mm. You know, I mean, it's you know, sometimes my wife tells me she said she says, you know what? I mean, you know, I, I hear you. She doesn't really know what really, really all the details of what we would be dealing with. She really doesn't even pay attention. But she's like, man, you seem like these people are angry or whatever. Aren't you scared? Aren't you afraid? I'm like, no, no, because guess what? I mean, I'm gonna tell the truth. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I believe. And I can sleep like a baby. I don't need to look over my shoulder. If someone wants to fight and kill me or harm me based on me telling the truth, I mean, all right, you got me. If you get the drop, you got me. Okay. I mean, don't try it. You might, you, you, you might, you listen. I like it. We, 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 we do keep, we do protect ourselves. I mean, we don't, we, we ain't, it ain't going to be easy out. But if you get me, you get me. But I'm, I'm not walking around scared like, oh, you know. You know, if if someone questions my, my my beliefs, I'm gonna tell you what I believe. I don't need to like prep. I don't need to be prepared. I don't need to like because it's the truth. Yeah. Whatever I know to be the truth, I can say it right now. You can wake me up at 1 a.m. and I can just start saying it. You can catch me at work. You can catch me on the basketball court. You can catch me on the soccer field. It's gonna be the same at all times. I don't need to like sneak in at the end of the show and be like, hey, oh, I just I'm um, just uh, showing up just you know to try to act like yeah I, yeah I confronted them dudes. Listen. I mean, just the, the truth is going to actually take care of itself. Yes. But no, we don't need to be scared. But for the cowards, I mean, every day, a little piece of you has to die inside mm -hmm. that you can't even say, no, Mubarak Jelani is the greatest man ever out loud. You can't even say that. <laughs> just come on the show and be like, Mubarak Jelani forever. My machine, <laughs> may my machine live forever. Even if you just said that, I will respect it. I, I respect like, I mean, them more. Right? I respect those Looney yeah. Tunes more than these guys who like, you know, yeah. you know I, I, dare, I mean, I dare, it's just. I'm daring anybody. I'm talking about anybody <laughs> to come on this show and say that uh, Umnor is their imam, their leader. Yeah. I mean, do that. I, 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 I would, I would respect it. I really would. I, at least, at least they're standing on their beliefs, and that's the thing. I mean, if you're gonna stand on what you believe and be of it articulated, whether you can articulate it well or not. You know, I mean, that, that's another thing. But if someone comes on here and, and, and goes toe to toe and explains why this this book or whatever, TMOA, female imam, whatever, it's a true. I mean, I I mean, you got it. I mean, and and then what does Allah say? He'll be the one to judge between us on Yawm al Qiyamah, at least. Yes. But to literally just hide in your in your your, your, your your trailer, your two bedroom, one bathroom trailer and just like, you know, we're the, you know, we're, we're, we're the, the, the top of the food chain and we're going to be, and we was being told that, I know I'm going off. Let me go, just go, say this go, real go, quick go, and then go, I'll be done. Go. We were told at the 2004 retreat that we were going to be running the United States government and that we were going to be like up in the White House. Do so you remember that? Y'all remember that? I mean, yes. <laughs> we were like, yeah, I'm going to get this state. I'm going to get that state. <laughs> we were told some wild stuff and we were believing it. I mean, are these dudes still somewhere in their trailer? I mean, there's nothing wrong with living in a trailer. I lived in a trailer. OK, but I'm just saying, are you still thinking that you're going to be the leader of the of the world? Because Jelani said he's dead now. It did not happen. You're still believing it? And just think he was telling you anything. Sneak peek. The same things were said to these people in these books in this deck of the nation. Mm -hmm. so allegedly by Allah. And we're supposed to tell them, you are going to lead Saudi Arabia. Who's dead? <laughs> <laughs> he ain't leaving nothing. It's still in Saudi Arabia. It's not, it's not Naveed, Naveedville or whatever. It's in Saudi Arabia. It's still Saudi Arabia. <laughs> it's not TMOA headquarters number two. It's still Saudi Arabia. <laughs> I mean, yo, just yo, just come out and be like, I, right, I, right, we got got.
That's all it is. Seriously. We won't even, I mean, seriously, we won't even rub it in or nothing. Just, I mean, it's it's time. Just, I mean, this John is, this John is well, over, man. Yeah. Off, it's um, over, man. We'll have weekly segments and we'll go ahead and continue to um, just dissect this book and with hopes, inshallah, that some of these older brothers see the errors in their ways and, and realize that they need to correct themselves and they owe a lot of people, you know, a lot of people apology, a sincere, a sincere apology too, you know. So, uh, we'll leave it there because you y'all about to get me going, man. I'm I'm really trying. To yeah, yeah. Now. I, <laughs> and, let, and let me just say this: this this will be the last thing I say. <laughs> since, I mean, since basically, basically, it is these older brothers. It definitely is these older brothers that are really they are they are clinging to this book like it is. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I I mean I don't like know what the, I don't know why they're so hard on it. <laughs> like, yeah, that, I, yeah. Like, like, I mean, it's, Washington, it's, we had like the last five. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. The Book of Eli. Yeah, yeah they yeah, treat yeah. that like the Book yeah. of Eli, man. No, no, no. <laughs> but seriously, but seriously, yo. Since I mean, all these old heads. I mean, what do you have to lose? I mean, uh, I mean, is it because? You know, Um Noor is going to kick you out of Jermont. I mean, what is it? Come on the show. We will do a special show. As many, one, two, ten, however many. We will schedule it, and y'all can all just, you know, explain, enlighten us on this book. Because everything that's said is like, oh, we don't understand it. We don't know. We're not doing it right. Or it is, you know, all right. Let's, let's come on, set a time, pick a time. It's an open invitation Old head or young head, I don't care who it is. Come on, but specifically for the old heads, I'm I'm talking to all these these older brothers that have so much to say about this book. You are cordially invited to come on this show. We will do it any day of the week. I will take off work. We will do it any day of the week. We will sit down and we will discuss this book and try to figure out why it is that we are either misguided about the book or why y'all are misguided about the book. But at the end of the day, what we hope to get to, to arrive at is what is actually part of Islam and clearly point out what isn't about this book. So you're cordially invited. Just let us know. I'm sure we will have some uh, some comments about it uh, in the near future. But the invitation is open. Alhamdulillah. Let's, let's wrap right. it up, brothers. Let's wrap All it right, up. All right, so it's on you. Uh, it's it's well, on you, uh, Mark, to close <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. We'll we'll just uh, recite those two ayahs that we went over earlier, and then we'll just close out, inshallah. So, um, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله لا يستهي أن يضرب مثلا ما بعوضة فما فوقها فأما الذين آمنوا فيعلمون أنه الحق من ربهم وأما الذين كفروا فيقولون ماذا أراد الله بهذا مثلا يضل به كثيرا ويهدي به كثيرا وما يضل به إلا الفاسقين الذين ينقضون عهد الله من بعد ميثاقه ويقطعون ما ويقطعون ما أمر الله به أن يوصل ويفسدون في الأرض أولئك هم الخاسرون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته